Hello in the next episode. Today's video I'm going to install this small chip into the Nintendo Switch Lite. It's been a while that you know I haven't released any videos because you know I had to move out from my previous location to the new one. It's been like three weeks out of my life and I had to carry on my jobs. I had few backlogs etc etc. It was very very hard time for me and my family but now I'm back and I'm making a video for you. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. It doesn't matter if you just started the journey with electronics or you are an experienced designer. But if you'd like to create some project, PCBWay will get you covered. So you can design your own PCB board in just a few clicks. You can even upload your project and you will get a manual review by a professional team. Also, PCBWay can assemble PCB for you and they source the components if needed. Why PCBWay? The answer is simple. You will get the best value, manufacturer direct pricing, fast turnaround times as fast as 24 hours, minimum quantities requirements, on time shipping, delivery rate of 99%. PCBWay.com, you can find the link in the video description. And now let's get back to our switch. This is the RP2040, but it's not 01. This is a completely different model. And I show you advantages of this chip. And today's hero is a Nintendo Switch Lite. Let's install this chip into this console. Can we do this? Let's do this. All right, so this is our hero, our Switch. And this is this chip. As you can see, this is the RP2040-01. So this is the first peak of light. We've got two buttons here and USB-C port. We need to also solder here three resistors. But first thing what we need to do, we just need to program this chip and remove a USB-C and two buttons here. Then we need to solder the resistors, etc, etc. So this is a very long process. Look at this chip here. What's the difference? Difference is, look at this. This is two-sided chip. We've got components on the one side of the PCB board, and we've got also components on the other side. Even if we remove USB-C port and buttons, it's not flat. It's like this. Sometimes, you know, we had so many problems, you know, to find a place in the console to fit this. But this model is completely different one. It's got the same parameters, but main thing, what I like, is look at this. This is completely flat. There's no components here to bother me, you know, during the installation. So I can put it like this and solder the points. Also, look at this. We've got TLK, CMD, TAT0, and we've already got resistors, 47 ohms, pre-installed, so we don't need to do this anymore. Another nice thing is we can solder here micro USB adapter. We can connect, you know, to the computer, PC or laptop, and we can press this button. This is the program button, and we can program this chip. But this chip came already with the pre-installed firmware. Maybe this is not the latest firmware I've seen, but you know, when this chip is already installed in the console, we can update it easily using the payloads whatsoever. You know, it's a very easy process, so we don't need to solder this back, etc. etc. Like I said, the firmware is already there, but I don't know what version is it. So we can update it later if we don't like it. Yeah. Also, this chip, it's got the same parameters like the previous one, but I think it's a little bit faster. But this is my my private opinion. All right, so the chip is here. I'm going to use also this version 2 adapter for the processor or the APU. I'm going to solder the wire here to the two middle pins to make it easy. All right, so let's start this process. So first thing, as I always say, we just need to update this console first. Even the game, Legend of Zelda. Yeah, let's go to the system settings, the system. All right, so our system is up to date. We've got SD card probably in, yes. All right, so this is what I need to do. So I can turn this off. So the console is off right now. So I just need to remove the SD card. Nice, Samsung Evo Select. This SD card is quite good. It's not the best, but it's okay. I'm going just to plug this to my PC. I'm going to copy all necessary files to this SD card. Let's do this. All right, so I'm just going to copy these files here. I know that, you know, I'm not using the latest hotspot. 
you know my job basically is to install the chip so i can safely remove this from my pc it's very important to don't unplug it like you know when it's when it's plugged don't do this without ejecting card reader so as you can see now i'm going to eject so my sd card is already prepared all right so next step is to disassemble the cons you know, this process it's a little bit easier than you know if you do OLED because you don't need to fully disassemble the console. All right, all four screws are removed. Try wing. We got two Phillips screws on the top. At the bottom, we got also two screws. So we are starting from the bottom. So I'm using like a prayer, something like this. Easy, but you need to make sure that all screws are removed. Sometimes, you know, that R and that L buttons can come off, but this is not something, you know, very important. You can easily put it back together, right? Back plate is removed. So I'm using the same tool to disconnect this ribbon tape and the battery. So now we are safe. Yeah, first thing what you need to do, you just need to disconnect the battery, then heat sink. You can use hot air. I'm using 140 degrees just to make this form soft the glue i mean the glue yeah so i'm heating up this middle part it's just 140 degrees so so we won't break it you can see we are done but we didn't unscrew three screws what i always do we just need to remove the solder paste like that and what i also do i just need to remove the game card reader because it is in the place where we need to solder 3.3 volts and because of that reader we cannot do this so we need to remove this first another question is where we can place this chip it can be like this because you know the normal chip like hw fly light it's like this as you can see this is cut out because of the metal shield on the apu so we cannot place this chip like this probably if we do this higher a little bit yes but we cannot do this so we need to find different place for it so the different place for it is just a common place like in switch oled it's here so i think we will install this chip here like i said there's no problem because it's completely flat we can use a double side tape place it like this and we need to solder to this all those points the points are here mainly all right so as you can see i don't need to disassemble fully this console this console is already disassembled to let me install the chip i don't need to do anything more all right so let's start let's start it we just need to remove that metal shield first install the ribbon tape on the apu and we need to also solder the jumper wire to this ribbon tape let's start from here just need to wiggle it a little bit oh and that's it very easy so i'm going to clean this I'm going to use this ribbon tape, the version 2, as you can see here. All right, first, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean the residue of the thermal paste. I'm using the toothbrush to remove the thermal paste, you know, between the cups. All right, it's brilliant. This is what I like. So let's put it, put it on the side. Let's go under the microscope. So as always, what I do, I just thin all these contacts. Make it easier later. You need to remember, you need to do this on both sides. Soldering iron, let's thin them. See, just, just like this. Let's flip it over. Let's carry on. All right, so the job is done. Here we need to solder the jumper wire. Sorry that you know the picture is shaking, but in the previous location I had shelves you know above me, so I can install the cameras. Now everything is you know attached to my desk. When I shake it, everything is shaking. But as you can see, this line goes here, goes here, and it goes to the two middle pins. You know we can solder just the jumper wire just to the one of them. It doesn't have to be soldered to the ball. I always do like this, you know, I need to solder to the both of them. So the one jumper wire in the middle of that. Let's apply some solder. So the tape is prepared. Now we need to prepare the jumper wire. And I'm using, you know, anything my, you know, PCB holder. Because we need to thin. And as I said in many, many of my previous videos, this is not just the copper wire. This wire is covered by transparent paint. We need to prepare this need to burn with soldering iron you need to thin it as you can see 
it's already done. It will be a little bit too long, it will be a little bit shorter. That's why I'm going just to cut this off a little bit. All right, to be very comfortable for me. Got a really thin jumper wire. You know, I first I try to do this with this tip, it's not too thick, should be right. If not, I'm going to use the bigger one. More solder. See, I could just leave this like that. If I'm not able to solder it on the both sides, I will just leave this like it is now. Just put some weight on it, like my tweezers. Let's focus this a little bit more. Now I should have more. Oh, no. Don't worry about that. Nothing to worry about. Just wanted to connect two points. Not all of them. I think I need to use a little bit bigger tip. Let's add some blocks. And make sure you are using 300 degrees. Because if you use more... Oh, you see? I do something like this. Probably there is no difference. But for me, I think it's a little bit faster in glitching. But this is my opinion. This is the same wire, yeah. I've tried many ways. I've tried to solder just the one part and I've tried to do this like this. And I think this is better. When the two points in the middle are connected. So let's quickly remove this excess. Let's clean the flocks from there because you know you need to remember that the flocks help us a lot. But when you leave this on the other components, this is our enemy. Because when it's completely dry, it doesn't conduct the power. Alright, so this is our tape already prepared. So I'm cutting off excess of the wire. And we can carry on with our switch. Alright, so now we need to solder this tape to our APU. You know, when the tape is in the correct place, let me check this. Okay. All right. All right. So now we can solder the anchor points here just to keep this tape in the one place. So I'm adding the flux right now. I'm using the thick tip in my soldering iron. But like I said, don't exceed 300 degrees. Otherwise, you will destroy the ribbon tape and the chip. Maybe not the chip, but you know the the parts where you need to solder something, you know. They just they cannot take more more you know heat than 300 degrees. If you set it up for 350, you will lose all the parts and connections. So make sure you don't use, you don't use you know the too much too much heat. Very very important. Of course, you can reveal the parts, but you know, we don't want this. Because we need to do this job as quick as we can without making a mess mistakes, you know. So now I'm applying the flux here on the, on the cups. And I'm going to use the tweezers to press this to the APU surface to make a better bonding. And I'm going to use the soldering iron with the thin tip, the fine tip, you see. This is the ground point, actually. Let me focus more. I'm going just to use the tweezers to press it. And use my soldering iron. Just keep holding for a while. This is very important. If you, you, if you want to have good connections, you need to touch the soldering iron to the cup. And wait a while. If you do this very, very fast, it won't solder. You would see, you know, that it looked like, you know, it's soldered, but it's not. You know, the same is with, if you drop the solder. If you've got a solder on your iron, you want to solder something. If you drop it on the desk or on your PCB board or on the one of the component, it won't solder so quickly because it needs a little bit more time, more temperature. So now I think this is soldered very properly. The same is here. And because we don't want to have this mess around. Now I'm going to clean this. Because I don't like too much blocks everywhere. 
Let me just zoom out. All right, it's quite okay, quite good. So let's use our multimeter. I'm going to use in the beep mode because we can, you know, the resistance here is very low, so it will beep all the time. I can check the values. All right, so the black prop on the ground. Let's check this now. So this is the ground, and yes, this is the ground. And this is a very important point. And usually it's got about between 10 ohms and 20. Okay, and this is our ground point. Sometimes when you drop, you know, your solder here and those two cups are connected. This, this is nothing to worry about because here it's also the ground. Here is ground and the cups next, next to it, it's ground. Here is not ground, but here is grounded. So if you connect by solder, if you breach those two points, there's nothing to worry about. Or, you know what, I would just lit a little bit bend this tape the middle because now it's going to bother me it's covering you know my points just to leave this like that just you know a little bit bent because the most important points are here all right so what we need to do here we've got point c so point dot zero and here we've got point a emd this is point d elk point b rst is here and we also need a ground. A ground we can take from here. We'll check this later. And we need 3.3 volts. And we will take 3.3 volts from this cup, this side of the cup. All right. So let's solder the jumper wire to the, the right point. This is the best position for me. Okay. So I'm going to just apply blocks here, here, here. And that's it for this time. So at the moment you can't really see this, but I'm taking this wire, my jumper wire. Okay, so my jumper wire was previously prepared for me, so I just need to thin the end of this a little bit. So now, as you can see, it's already in the solder. But before I solder this, I just wanted to quickly show you. The multimeter is in the beep mode, so you will see. Now I'm going just to this one and this. All right, so you need to be careful. I don't know where these points go. So make sure you're using only these two points. They're the same. These are not the same. The same situation is point B. You can solve it here, point B, here, here, and here. We've got four points, four points B, so RST. We also need to find the ground point. So the ground point is here, here. This is not the ground point. But we can solder the ground point here. All right. So I just need to make, you know, my jumper wire tip. What I think is, I think it's too much. Let me just quickly have a look at it one more time. Yes, it's too long. Yeah. All right. I will try to solder like this. If not, I need to cut this down a little bit. Gonna make it a little bit stronger. Something like this. And we need to bend the end of this so we don't want to touch this touch this, the shield otherwise this point will be shorted to ground let me zoom in a little bit more okay so the point that zero is already soldered so i'm cutting down the jumper wire so we are, we are doing point a the md here it's also tint too much it should be less than that i need to cut this down Try to solve this now. And it's done. Point A, C, M, D is soldered. Now the point D, E, K, is solid now. So we can clean this now. We can measure it now. We know the values. They are the same like for OLED, like for normal switch. They are very, very similar. So uh, multimeter. Okay, so we need to go to the diode mode. Black probe on the ground, red probe on point C, for example. And let's check this now. 
as you can see they are the same values for all switches so we've got the values from the 0 0.4 to 0, 0 0.9 something like that. the same is for, for the other points this is point a and point d is exactly the same so we need to measure this because we need to make sure they are not shorted to ground by accident or something like this all right so now what we've got left we've got point b ground and 3.3 .3. All right, so this is point B, press T, and it's done. All right, and two more points. Now we're going to solder the ground point. All right, so let's find the ground point. And we've already found it. And use these parts as a ground point. All right, should be all right. We don't want the spikes here. Okay, so we've got ground point. 3.3 .3 point is here. Just to prepare my jumper wire to just a little bit bent it. So it's going to be like this here. It has to be soldered to this side of the cup. So now, well, what do we need to do? We just need to clean all those points. As I said before, you know, the flocks can destroy your work. Make sure there's no flocks residue. All right, so we've got all our, our points. You need to know which one is goes where. This is that zero, point C, point A, CMD. No, this is not A, the second one. This one is point A, point D, CLK, 3.3. .3. Point B, move them a little bit further because we need to close the metal sheet on the APU. So now this is the moment, do it like this. So I just need to bend a little bit my metal shield here. All right, the metal shield is bent in this place. As we know, I cut this ribbon tape out. We want to make it good. All right, so it doesn't bother anything. So all right i just need to clean again the core and apply the thermal paste it's a little bit too much but it's okay just make sure you don't you won't cut any wire you've just soldered all right so this is our double side tape to cut off the excess of it A knife is not sharp, but it's just bodging this like this. All right, so so now we can just peel this off. I'm going just to very close to this edge, and this is what I like always with this chip. This pick of line is okay. Now we need to solder. As you can see, everything is nicely described. 3.3 volts, that zero, CMD, point A. CLK, point D, ST, RST, so point B, TPU, and ground. Everything is described. We've got resistors on place. We need to solder everything here. The job is done. Let's carry on. First point, 3.3. Maybe we should start from the ground point. It can be better. All right, so I'm going to just to start from the ground point. Let's make sure this is the ground. Yes, it is. This point has to be soldered here. Just letting this a little bit apply some blocks. One point is done. Let's do the rest. So now we've got CPU. This is the one which goes from my ribbon tape. Yes, this is the one. So I'm going to let's make sure I'm just going to do the test because, the, you know, underneath there is a point B. Yeah, that's it. And we need to solder this here. Oops.
Okay, CPU is soldered. Now we need to find point B. Point B is the one from here. It goes from the bottom. We need to avoid this point. You sit is going, you know, this is the place for the screw for the heat sink. You don't want to squeeze this wire. You can ground it by accident. So three points done, four points left. We've got C and K. So this is the point D. Where is the LK point? Yeah, we need to always remember that the, this is the old, correct order. This is point C or that zero. This is point CMD or point A. And this is point D or CLK. So now we need to solder point CLK to this point. So I've got point CLK or point D. I'm going just to solder this like this. It's quite loose, so I don't need to worry about there's not going to be any tension you know if you didn't hear what i said at the beginning you know this jumper wire what i use is they are coated by you know transparent paint they are not just you know the co only the copper wires because as you can see they are shorted together they they touching each other which could cause short on the motherboard but because they are coated by the transparent paint this is like a normal wire I don't use, you know, the A, W, G wires, which are there. They got some insulations because I don't like it. They cause the tension on the points. If you solder it not properly, you can damage the part. Then you need to rebuild it if you can. If, if you have no idea how to do this, you are screwed. What can I say? All right, so we've got three points left. The MD, so that means this is the point A, that's zero, and 3.3, middle wire. Right, the middle of wire is prepared. Done. We need to solder point C now. Point C is the wire here. Apply some flux. Let's solder point C. And the last one, the last one is 3.3 volts, which is here. All right, so that was the last point. So now let's clean the points first. All right, I think they are very, very clean at the moment. Let me just sort the wires. It doesn't look, you know, professional here. I don't care, honestly. It is what it is, you know, it's the best what I could do. Most important is this point because there is a screw for heatsink. We need also be careful when we going to connect back again the uh, uh, the game card reader all right and the most important is now let's set up our multimeter for the diode mode let's, let's check the values black probe on the ground and we've got 3.3 volts and this is correct exactly the same like in OLED 3.3 volts is good now we've got that zero this is correct now we've got CMD, that point A, correct, CLK, so this is point D, absolutely perfect. You've got ST, so this is RST point, which means this is point B, and point B is also perfect. CPU, and CPU should be between 0 0.25 and 0 0.6. And we've got the ground point. So every single value here is perfect. So we should now plug the battery in to connect that ribbon tape and it should be all right. So let's do this. We have no shorts anywhere. So I've just measured this. We need to be careful on this connector because this connector is very important. If you are not careful enough, you can damage this connector. And if you damage this connector, as you can see here, this is like the other side. This is the next PCB board. What you've got here, this is the backlight connector. This is very important. You've got power buttons, volume buttons. You've got speakers, speaker here. And the analog stick, two buttons. And they are connected by this tape. 
here. So if something is wrong here, you won't have the backlights, so you can you can hear some sounds, but you cannot see any picture on the screen. This is the main problem. All right, so now everything is complex and connected. Let's let's watch the diode, which is here. I'm going just to press the power button here, and what's happening now? All right, so now it's glitching. It's glitching now. And it's done. Can we see on the picture? Yes, you can see. No SD card. <laughs> okay, so what I just need to do, I just need to connect back to, you know, the, the game card reader, heat sink, put back, you know, the shield, metal shield, and the job is done. All right, so what I'm going just to do now, I'm going to going just to power this off. Okay, it's off. To be careful on this. All right, so let's put back, you know, the heat sink. Let's clean the old thermal paste. I always apply fresh thermal paste. It's one of my conditions. So now, it's off true. I just need to make sure that here there is no tape. There is no tape. So I just need to make sure that here there is no, I need, there is no jumper wires. All right, before I cover this with the captain tape, because I need to secure this area with the captain tape, I need to check if the game card reader works or SD card reader. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to prepare a switch for the first booting. This is already prepared SD card. So let's press the power button. Glitching, glitching. We are done. Okay, so let's launch it to the custom firmware from the NAND memory. And it's going to the custom firmware. Right. So looks looks like everything is good now. Let's check this. Let's go to the system. Let's turn on flight mode just in case. Let's check the system. Current system version 16.0.3, atmosphere is 1.5.3. S letter at the end, that means we are in the SysNAND not in the emunat so if i scroll this down let's i just need to turn this off automatic software updates we don't want this so as you can see we are in the proper custom firmware if i go to the album you got some homebrew apps you can use them it's random ones and, you know you can change the terms of the switch. You can do much more with the homebrew installed. Let's go to the home screen and let's test the game. If the game card reader is good or no. Yes, it's reading the game cards. So it's fantastic. So I can put everything back together. The job is done. You know, process of installation it's not difficult so now just applying the captain tape this is just to protect this chip i know you know my customer won't see the light proper light because you know it's covered by the captain tape so the light going to be orange but this is not most important the most important is that you can use homebrew apps on the switch so the job is done all right, so as you can see, this process was much easier than, you know, installing the same chip uh, in OLED switch. So, you know, you didn't have to remove the motherboard. It was just, you know, a few components and that's it. You know, as you could see, the new chip, you know, has got much better design than the previous one. The price is very similar, you know, to this. But, you know, and on the market, you can find also the newest peak, peak of flies, like they looked like exactly the same like you know the previous hw fly but the difference is that they've got different chip they've got pico fly chip rp but this you know the way of installation is exactly the same there's no difference between them and they are also quite good you can re reprogram it you've got adapter in, uh, already uh, included in the set my next video going to be i'm going to install the same chip but for normal switch, 
I, I can't remember what was the version, if it was version 1 or 2, it doesn't matter. The only difference is that ribbon tape which goes on the APU. That's it. All right. And as I said, sorry about that. I didn't release you know, any videos. Within two months, I, I've been very busy. All right. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you next time.